Uh, tomorrow I've got a job, and I like to uh, keep everything as fresh as possible. And um, for me, that means pressing citrus to order, or in this case, uh, making the ginger beer as close to the event date as possible. Let's get started. Start with a whole lot of ginger, maybe an entire hand of it. What you want to do is you want to chop it up into small manageable pieces like that, maybe quarter size, maybe half dollar size. What's important is that you get the pieces as small as, uh, as your food processor could manage. I've got a little dinky one right here, just a tiny little thing. But you know what? It gets the job done. And as long as you do your part, it will do its part. Don't even worry about, um, about the skins right there, because when we start juicing it, it's not even going to matter. You want to make sure to, to make all those big pieces go to the bottom. Little pieces will come up to the top, that's fine. But what's important is that these small pieces get like beaten to a pulp. Small enough so that when you squeeze it through that juicer, all that wonderful golden juice will come out. That's exactly what you want. Uh, with your clean hands, go ahead and introduce it to the cheesecloth. You've got a nice large square of cheesecloth here. That's going to serve to make sure that it, um, it, the juice stays separate from the pulp. And you just make a little sachet about it, like that. Make sure that no parts escape. Go ahead and put that into a juicer. Now, now you squeeze really hard and make sure that that juice comes out. Before we go any further, I want to show you something that's going to help you out later on. You might remember that ginger beer is sparkly, carbonated. You wonder how it gets in there? Let me show you. Soda siphon. Now, this is a 32 ounce tank for my soda siphon. These are uh, 30 to 40 bucks, maybe even 60 if you go to somewhere a little bit more expensive. I got mine from a restaurant supply store. Uh, you might think, oh no, but it's only for restaurant owners. No, you can go in there too, and I do. So, you might be wondering, why is the dispersal straw inside the refrigerator, along with the seal and the valve? Well, I'll tell you. You've got ice-cold ginger beer that you want to stay carbonated, right? Well, all of these surfaces come into contact with that liquid, and the heat energy contained in those surfaces can be pulled into the ginger beer, thereby warming it up and making the CO2 more uh, able to be dissociated from the rest of the liquid. That means that that ginger beer that you spent all that time learning about, researching, and putting together, it's going to go flat quicker, and you don't want that. Also, in a pinch, you can take this and stick it in the freezer. So you've stuck with me this far. We've got two ounces of fresh ginger juice, and to that we're going to add four ounces of freshly pressed lemon juice. Now, you might freak out when this happens, don't. What's going to happen here is this wonderful, wonderful yellow, golden, um, hazy goodness is going to turn pink, like ruby red pink. Don't freak out when that happens. It's completely natural and it will correct itself in the end. When you add acid, citric acid, from citrus like limes, lemons, oranges, lemons in particular, the low pH causes the color to shift. And uh, you'll see that in just a second. So we're going to take these four, maybe five lemons, and uh, go ahead and press them and introduce them into the ginger juice. So you see that nice ruby red color? That's not what your ginger beer is going to look like. What we're going to do is we're going to add six ounces of simple syrup. That's just equal parts sugar and water. Now a lot of people will say, oh hey, stick it on the stove. We're not going to do that today because I'm cheap and because I don't have the time to wait around for simple syrup to form on the stove. What we're going to do is just kind of mix it up like that, make a nice little slurry. And since microwaves heat up water molecules and this is half water, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take this slurry and we're going to stick it in the microwave for like one minute stir it up, and guess what? Instant simple syrup. So in between takes, I realized that the amount of ginger beer that we were making was not going to be enough to cover all of the people we were going to have to serve. So instead of making a double batch of uh, ginger beer, we're now making a quadruple batch of ginger beer. 
which is a-okay by me, because if they don't drink it all, I get to take it home. So, you can see that I've switched from my pint glass to my large mixing bowl, and uh, now we're going to add 40 ounces of water to our 4 ounces of ginger juice, 8 ounces of lemon, and 12 ounces of simple syrup, making a 64 ounce batch of ginger beer. So let's go ahead and do that. I've already got 20 ounces in here. We're just gonna go ahead and add 20 more ounces of very, very cold, very, very filtered brittle water. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and show this to you. And I hope you guys don't mind. Here we go. Whew. All right, so. As you can see, our ruby red ginger beer has now become normal looking ginger beer. Okay. So, now that we've got our massive, massive amount of ginger beer, it's time to go ahead and put it into the soda siphon. So let's go ahead and grab our chilled soda siphon and all the parts that go with it. And bring it over to our workspace. This is a 32 ounce soda siphon. And we're only going to add half of our mixture for the soda siphon. God, that's cold. So, we've got our 32 ounce measuring cup. Go ahead and measure that out. Alright, there we go. And we got half the mixture there. So, let's go ahead and add our ginger beer to the soda siphon. You can hear it fill all the way up. It gets more and more high pitched as it goes up. If you ever fill the bottle, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Set that off to the side, and now we're going to add our seal. Make sure that it's seated, otherwise you're going to be wearing your ginger beer instead of drinking it. So a straw all the way down to the bottom, make sure it's flush, and then screw on top the flow regulator or valve assembly as some people like to call it. I like to call it either. Make sure that's on nice and tight. Now this is the fun part. Take your 8 gram CO2 cartridge, stick it in the, sound, in the holder right there, just screw it on. And you'll say, hey, when will I know when it's when it's carbonated? Well, let me show you. Screw it on there and just listen. Just listen. That's how you know. Shake it once, refrigerate it, and you're done. And not just 32 ounces. And I don't have two soda siphons. That means it has to go somewhere. Now, I can't drink all of it tonight. So I'm going to bottle it in a flip-top bottle. 